Now let us proceed to understand the next set of modal verbs which are shall and should. Shall is used only with the first person I and V. For example, I shall finish my homework by 6 p.m. We shall never forget each other. But sometimes shall can be used even with the second person and third person in formal situation and in legal documents, minutes of meetings, etc. to express obligation and commands. For example, the board of directors shall be responsible for payment to stockholders. The college president shall report financial shortfalls to the principal each semester. The recruits shall gather in the parade ground. Shall is also used in questions. Shall I go? Shall is used when we take people's opinions. Shall we complain about the shortage of water in a building to the president of the society? Shall is used to express statements. I shall go to Europe for a holiday this year. In normal conversational English nowadays, we can see that will is replacing shall and the contracted form of will is used. But in certain cases, it is appropriate to use shall in place of will, especially if they are suggestions or questions. For example, we say, what time shall I call you? We cannot say, what time will I call you? We say, what shall I wear to the party? We cannot say, what will I wear to the party? The opposite of shall is just made by adding not to it. It will become shall not or the short form what we call shan't. I shall be here tomorrow. I shall not be here tomorrow or I shan't be here tomorrow. Let us now understand the uses of should. Should is used when we are giving instructions in obligations and when we express duties. For example, I should help the old people cross the road. You should never tell a lie. You should always speak a truth and you should not talk in class. Should is also used to give advice or opinion. For example, you should try and lose weight. Sometimes I think or I don't think is also used with should to give advice and opinions. For example, I think the government should do something about helping the beggars. I don't think you should take commerce in your graduation. We can see that in sentences where it is obligatory or mandatory, must is used in place of should. For example, you must apologize to the teacher for coming late to the class. We can also see that instead of should sometimes or most of the times ought to can be used. For example, you ought to have come to the party. It was a great party. Do you think I ought to apply for the job? Or I ought to have applied for the job. I would have got it. Sometimes should is used with have plus verb. I should have taken my tablet. I'm feeling sick again. Should is also used with not plus have plus verb. For example, I should have not eaten so much. I'm feeling sick now. It is important for us to remember that we should not use to when we are using should and when we are using the word suggest. For example, what do you suggest? We do or what do you suggest? We should do. But never say what do you suggest us to do? Another example, my dad suggested that I should buy a car. My dad suggested that I buy a car, but the following sentence will be wrong when we say 
my dad suggested me to buy a car. Should is also used after certain adjectives like strange, odd, funny, natural, typical, interesting, surprise and surprising. For example, it's a surprise that he should say such a thing. He is never rude. It's so odd that he should wear a jeans. He is always dressed formally. He is an American. It is interesting that he should talk in Hindi. The dogs are tied. It is natural that they should bark. It is surprising that he should come for a movie. He hates watching movies. It's funny that he should dance. He is a fat man. It is typical that he should speak in Gujarati. He hails from Ahmedabad. Should is also used with conditionals. For example, if Tom should phone while I'm out, tell him I'll call him back. Or should Tom phone, tell him I'll call him back. Should is used as how should or why should, especially when we are angry or irritated with something. Why should it be illegal to commit suicide? It is our lives. How should I know that this is a no parking zone? There is no sign written here. Let us proceed to understand the next set of models which are may and might. Both may and might indicate that something is possible but when you use may we are more sure of the outcome but when we use might we are not very sure of the outcome or the outcome is unlikely. For example, you may go hiking one day but you might climb Mount Everest one day. My mother may allow me to stay with my friends the night over but my father might allow me to spend the night with my friends. We can say Rita might have gone to the party last night but we cannot say Rita may have gone to the party last night because an action in the past requires might and not may. Might should be used for negative outcomes and may cannot be used for negative outcomes. For example, I might not go to the party is correct which means you are not interested in going to the party. But if you say I may not go to the party this means that you want to go but you are unable to go. May is also used for asking permissions. May I borrow your car please? May is used to suggest something is possible in the future. It may snow later in the evening. Now let us understand how the modal verb must is used in certain situations. Must is used to express compulsion, obligation or duty. He must apologize for his mistakes. The government must do something about corruption. Must is also used when we are certain something is true. There is no heater in your room, you must be freezing. You must really be worried that your not daughter has not come home today. Must or must not is also used to express strong obligation or compulsion when you want to instruct somebody not to do something. For example, we mustn't talk about our company's policies. It is confidential. You mustn't phone me at work. We are not allowed to use our cell phones. Let us understand how the modal auxiliary verb need is used. Need is used always with not, with to and with have. For example, I needn't have to go to work tomorrow. I needn't get up early or everything will be okay. You needn't worry or you don't need to worry. Need can also be used with to and you can say, if you want to see the sunrise, you need to get up early. Need can be used with not plus have and you say, 
I needn't have to get up early as it was Sunday. I needn't have to get up early, but it was a lovely morning, so I did. I needn't have to get up early, so I did not. Now let us understand how the modal auxiliary verb dare is used. Dare is always followed by not. We say he dare not disobey his principal or he will be suspended from the class. We dare not go out in the jungle tonight or our lives will be in danger. You dare not talk to the teacher rudely or you will be punished. We know the importance of English grammar in our lives now. How does it help to improve our language? What are the rules that we should follow? What are the mistakes that we should avoid? We have also learned the types of verbs. What are verbs? How they help us to make sentences? What are primary verbs? What are auxiliary verbs? What are modal verbs? And how the different types of verbs are used in different situations to make our language good and to use them correctly in writing and in speaking. We have already understood these models by going through the examples in this segment. Now let us understand them much better by the interesting story of Cinderella. Once upon a time there lived an unhappy young girl. Her mother was dead and her father had married a widow with two daughters. Her stepmother didn't like her one little bit. The stepdaughters had all the good things for themselves. Dresses, shoes, delicious food, soft beds and every home comfort. But for the poor unhappy girl there was nothing at all. No dresses, no lovely dishes, nothing but scraps, no rest, no comfort. She could not dream of anything. She would work hard all day. Only when evening came, she would sit for a while by the fire near the cinders. That's why everybody called her Cinderella. The only thing Cinderella had was a cat and she would spend long hours all alone talking to the cat. The cat said, you should not be sad, cheer up. You have something neither of your stepsisters has and that is beauty. It was quite true. Cinderella, even dressed in old rags, was a lovely girl. While her stepsisters, no matter how splendid and elegant their clothes, were still clumsy, lumpy and ugly and always would be. One day, beautiful new dresses arrived at the house. A ball was to be held at the palace and the stepsisters were getting ready to go. Cinderella didn't even dare ask if she could go too. She knew very well what the answer would be. You? You will stay at home and wash the dishes? scrub the floors and turn down the beds for your stepsisters. They will come home tired and very sleepy and you shall look after them. Cinderella sighed. Oh dear, I am so unhappy. Will I ever get any happiness in my life? Must I always suffer like this? She thought and the cat murmured meow. Suddenly something amazing happened which Cinderella might never have imagined in her dreams. As Cinderella was sitting all alone, there was a burst of light and a fairy appeared. Don't be alarmed, Cinderella, said the fairy. I know you would love to go to the ball and so you shall. You needn't be sad anymore. How can I dressed in rags, Cinderella asked. The servants will turn me away. Oh no, said the fairy, they dare not. And she smiled. With a flick of a magic wand, Cinderella found herself wearing the most beautiful dress she had ever seen. She couldn't believe her eyes that this was happening to her. Now for your coach, said the fairy. 
A real lady would never go to a ball on foot. Quick, get me a pumpkin. Oh, of course, said Cinderella, rushing away. Then the fairy turned to the cat. You, you bring me seven mice and remember they must be alive. Cinderella soon returned with the pumpkin and the cat with seven mice he had caught in the cellar. With a flick of the magic wand, the pumpkin turned into a sparkling coach and the mice became six white horses, while the seventh mouse turned into a coachman in a smart uniform and carrying a whip. Cinderella could hardly believe her eyes. Cinderella had a wonderful time at the ball until she heard the first stroke of midnight. She remembered what the fairy had said and just before the clock struck twelve, without a word of goodbye, she slipped from the prince's arms and ran down the steps. As she ran, she lost one of her slippers, but she dare not stop for a moment to pick it up. If the last stroke of midnight were to sound, oh, what a disaster that would be. Out she fled and vanished into the night. The prince, who was now madly in love with her, picked up the slipper and said to his ministers, Go and search everywhere for the girl whose foot this slipper fits. You must find her. I will never be content until I find her. So the ministers tried the slipper on the foot of every girl in the land until only Cinderella was left. That awful untidy girl simply couldn't have been at the ball, snapped her stepmother. Tell the prince he ought to marry one of my two daughters. Can't you see how ugly Cinderella is? But to everyone's amusement, the shoe fitted perfectly on Cinderella. Suddenly, the fairy appeared and waved her magic wand. In a flash, Cinderella appeared in a splendid dress, shining with youth and beauty. Her stepmother and stepsisters gaped at her in amazement and the minister said, Come with us, Cinderella. The prince is waiting for you. So Cinderella married the prince and lived happily ever after. As for the cat, he just said, meow. Friends, I'm very sure you would have thoroughly enjoyed the story of Cinderella and you would have seen how the models are carefully used in the story. I'm sure the story will help you to use the models in framing your sentences very comfortably and improving your language.